Hey everybody, it's Chris, and today we're going to do kind of a how-to video. Um, I think this might kind of become a little bit of a series for me because I've had some questions pop up on my YouTube videos and um, comments on different ways um, that I do things, and so I thought maybe this might be a good little tutorial to start with. Um, today we're going to do a set of coasters, and I do have other videos on my YouTube channel on how to do coasters, but um, they're a little bit older, and if you've just started following me, you probably... You may or may not have gone back to see what other videos I have available. If not, you really should. <laughs> but um, I had a question from another um, viewer who was asking about how I flood canvases. And so I thought that kind of sprung this idea about maybe I just need to do kind of a how-to series, if you will. So today I'm going to show you how I pour coasters. So I start with these four and one quarter inch tiles. Um, I buy these at Menards or Home Depot. Um, it's just a plain white glazed tile. So they are glazed. Don't worry about um, the paint not sticking to them because they work perfectly for this. So the first thing that I do is um, I tape the backs of them. So I use just the one inch painter's tape and I do, um, I don't buy the expensive clean line or anything like that. It's just a painter's tape and they all get taped down on the back sides. The next thing that I do is that I wipe them down with an al with an alcohol pad, um, and that just kind of takes any oils or anything that might be on the um, on the tile itself and kind of gets that off and gets it clean so that the paint will stick to it. And then I've got these sitting up on these little three ounce, they're little solo cups, and I find that these work really nice just to keep them up off the surface. And then once I'm done pouring these, they'll go over on a table and I will still have them sitting up on the solo cup until the paint is dry on them. And then they will go to a drying rack and they will dry for at least a week. I will tell you, honestly, I am not super patient when it comes to waiting um, and letting the paint cure. And I personally have not had issues by not waiting um, you know, up to a month for the paint to cure. I know that you will find a lot of people that will tell you don't put resin on anything until it has cured for at least a month. I personally have not had issues. I'm not telling you that you should that you should do this at a week or three days or whatever you decide to do. I'm just telling you that I personally have not had issues by resining in a week. And the funnest part to me is to get that resin back onto the paint to make it look beautiful again. Because in my opinion, it looks just like it did when you poured it. So I have all four coasters. I, I always um, pour in a set of four. And I have them all sitting up on my cups. And then I'm using little one ounce medicine cups. And I use one cup per coaster. And I spritz each one with the WD-40 silicone lubricant. And that helps the paint to release out of the cup. And then the next thing I do is to layer my paints in. So today we're going to do um, some pinks. And I think these are probably going to be really pretty. This is quinacridone magenta. So I always layer my paints in the cup. Um, and you know what? I'm going to, we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. This one and this one, we are not going to layer. And I'm going to show you the difference. So this is the quinacridone magenta. This happens to be a Valspar Elan pearl finish paint. Because this is house paint, I did put some silicone in this so that it will kind of help to create some effects. I don't find that house paint gives me a lot of effects even when it's mixed with my pouring medium. So these two will be layered and this one we're just going to squeeze the paint down in and we're going to see what the difference is. This is medium magenta. I think some of my paints are, oop, that was supposed to be squeezed in, wasn't it? Some of my paints are a little bit thicker, I think. And then I always like to put a little bit of bling in my pores, especially my coasters. So this is my custom silver paint and my custom silver, we're gonna squish a little bit more of that in there. My custom silver is the Liquitex Basics um, silver paint along with the Rust-Oleum silver glitter paint. Let me show you what that looks like. This is the Rust-Oleum glitter paint. So this actually looks kind of clear and then it has tons of glitter in it. I love this paint but I find that if I mix it in with the silver Liquitex Basics, that um, if I don't do that, it's kind of got a clear base to it. And sometimes it will leave um, clear spots in my coasters, which I don't think are very pretty. So that's why I add in 
a little bit of that Liquitex Silver Basics paint, and then that all gets mixed with my pouring medium. Okay, so these guys are the ones that were layered. I do try to get kind of close to the top of the cup because I find that I kind of do need all of that paint. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more of this in. And I'm gonna make sure that those are all the way to the top. Okay, so these two are the ones that I just squished it down in, and these two are the ones that we layered. So we're gonna see what the difference is. So then I just take my little cup of paint and I flip it over and I let the paint release from the cup, which you will see. That's the reason that I put the WD-40 in there. Hopefully it'll, you'll be able to see it. I can see it on the sides. You can see that it kind of released a little bit here and it looks a little bit clearer there. All right, and I'm gonna put my gloves on because I really should have had them on when I was touching the coasters. See how the paint released on that one? So you really should wear gloves when you're doing these just because the oils on your hands can also get onto the tiles and kind of cause some issues for you. So I really should have had gloves on, but that's okay. Okay, so I am going to, I always release mine kind of diagonal across the coaster, just like that. So this was one of them that was layered. I always have a little bit of paint left over. So I like to put it kind of on the corners so that I'm not wasting that paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one too. So this was one that we just squished the paint down into, if you remember. So you'll kind of see what the difference, if any. I mean, sometimes I personally don't think that there's like a ton of difference. Um, and then sometimes you will see it does make a difference to layer. I kind of get into the habit of just layering, I guess. And But this one's looking pretty cool. All right, and then I kind of tilt, I kind of tilt a little bit to the side and to kind of help that paint run where I want it to. All right, these are very pink, but they're very pretty. I'm kind of digging them. All right, so then I just pick them up and I start tilting them. So we'll start with this one since this is the one that we started with first. And you can see that I've got that upper left corner is covered because I did make sure that my paint, that I used the cup of paint. And then sometimes I kind of try to tip some of that off just because I don't necessarily like the diagonal lines that it creates. All right, and then that one is done. I always go back when I'm all finished to make sure that my edges are all pretty because if the edges aren't covered, they don't look very good, okay? I have to say right now that one's not as pretty as some of these other ones. So we're gonna come down here to this one. And I do kind of tend to like put my fingers on the corner of the tile just to kind of help keep some of the paint on the tile and kind of push it back up. And I apologize because you probably can't see me tilting very well, but I don't want to tilt over those other ones. There we go. And then we'll go to this one. This one has some really cool stuff here. so. I'm gonna try not to tilt that off if I can help it. And we'll see if we can retain it. And I'm gonna come down here and see if I can get this lower left corner done. There we go. And then I'll try and let this roll over and I'm gonna hold my fingers here to kind of catch it and then let it kind of flow back up there so that I retain some of that cool stuff that's going on. And then last but not least is this guy. And this one's kind of covered pretty well already. So it just needs a little bit of tilting. Wow, are these pink. <laughs> Which was what I was going for, but I don't know that I've done all pink before. Pink and a little bit of silver, I guess. All right. Okay, so there's our paint. Um, just kind of looking at the sides real quick just to see if there's anything that I can touch up while I have my paint on my gloves. And I am going to torch these. <clears throat> I can see a little bit of a spot right here that I'm going to touch up before I take my glove off. Otherwise, I think they look pretty darn good. All right, so I'm going to torch these real quick just to make sure that I've, I can see some air bubbles as the light hits them. 
and we'll torch them and see if anything else fun comes up. So sometimes when you um, use silicone, you'll get these little chains of cells. I'm, hopefully you guys can see that. And as I torched it, I can see that some of this stuff really came up through the paint. This one is not as exciting though, which is kind of interesting to me. Um, these two are the two, I believe, that were layered. And I have to really stop and think about that. Were they layered or did I just squish the paint in? Hmm, I may have to go back and look at that now just to compare. <clears throat> but you can see that there's not, like I, in my opinion, these three really look very similar. And then this one now is starting to get some stuff that's gonna come up through too. So I think in the end, I don't know that it really makes that much of a difference to layer the paint as it does just to kind of pour it into the cup. I guess I just feel like I have a little bit more control when I layer it, so. Okay, so these are gonna sit for about a week and then I'll show you guys what I do next. Um, they do get resin on the surface. So this one has been resined. And then, um, as you can see, there's some silver glitter there. As I said, I almost always put glitter or metallics in my pores, especially when I'm doing coasters and such. Okay, so here's what it looks like after it's resined. And I have already started to peel off some of the tape. And you'll find that if I can tear this tape off within like 24 hours of doing the resin, Generally, most of this will come off. Otherwise, I just use a really thin putty knife and I just gently um, go underneath these little resin bubbles and they pop right off. And then after I've got all the tape off, <clears throat> I put these felt pads on them and I buy these felt pads at Walmart. They are 3 8 inch and I just put them on all four corners and they're self-adhesive. This is another one that I did. This was kind of like a Dutch pour style, but look at those beautiful cells and all of that gold. So if it doesn't have metallic glitter paint in it, I've usually got a metallic paint of some sort in there. Okay, so this is what they look like when they are finished. I use the felt pads to help protect furniture. Some people put cork backs on them. I just put the felt pads on because I find that that's really easy and quick for me. The other thing that you can do is pour on six by six tiles and make trivets. Now this one I do have cork on just because this is something that's going to have like a lot of heat on it versus just maybe a coffee cup. So I do put cork on the backs of my trivets just to make sure that I'm helping to protect, protect counters and surfaces. So this was a six by six that was, um, it was a layered pour as well and then it got resin on it. The resin that I use is stone coat countertops. I've started to use counter culture DIY um, resin though because I find I really have bad reactions to the resin. Um, even though I wear a respirator, I wear gloves, I just, my body apparently just does not like it. And I don't know, I think it's certain resins that have more reaction for me than others because I've started to use countertop, or excuse me, counterculture DIY resin and I don't have those reactions. So I usually get like a rash on my forearms and it's just very irritating. <laughs> And sometimes my eyes itch and swell up a little bit. So it is not a fun thing. So if you are having reactions to the resin that you're using now, try a different resin because there are some out there that don't cause issues for me personally. All right, guys. So this is how you pour coasters. Um, like I said, they'll sit for about a week or so. They'll get resin and then um, they'll get the felt little pads on the corners. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, if there's anything else that you would like me to do kind of as a how-to you know, maybe there's some kind of a, a particular step in the process that you don't quite understand, please let me know. Um, I'm also going to post a link to a video on what items you need to get started if you'd like to start pour painting. It's just kind of things that I use or um, have found that are very helpful. And then along with that video, in the description of that video, if you go to that on what items you need, there's also a video on how I mix my paint, including my pouring medium recipe. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.